We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today and staying warm. So for all your tea sipping needs, don't forget to go on to lovelytea.net or amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash lovely tea. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the videos. All right, so we gotta talk about this whole 6 9 situation. As you guys know, I've been covering this from damn day one, okay? It was announced yesterday that basically 6 9 done snitched and told it all, honey, okay? A snitch, nigga, that's that shot don't like. Which I'm not surprised, you know, everybody wants to be gangsta on the internet, but when it comes to real court cases, real criminal charges, and facing real damn time, folks will start singing like a damn choir director, honey, okay? So this is what TMZ is reporting, go ahead and check this out. So this is what's being reported. They're saying, according to TMZ, Kentia McKenzie, Anthony Ellison, Denard Butler have all been indicted in connection with crimes related to the incarcerated rapper. McKenzie, also known as Kuda B, was indicted shortly after 6 9 spoke with investigators and pointed to McKenzie as a trigger man following the Keith shooting last summer. 6 9 allegedly paid McKenzie $10,000 to go after Keith. Last June, McKenzie and another man caught up with Keith outside the W Hotel in New York City where they opened fire. Lucky for Sosa, they missed. Although authorities have yet to apprehend McKenzie, Ellison is in custody for allegedly kidnapping and assaulting 6ix9ine while Butler was arrested by ATF on Wednesday, January 30th. Ellison and Butler are expected to appear in court later this afternoon. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the South District of New York declined to comment on the 6 9 cooperation. TMZ released a video of 6 9 allegedly arranging the hit on Chief Keefe's cousin, Tato, last November. In the clip, he offers the person on the phone a 30-pack to complete the mission. 6 9 is facing six felony charges stemming from his alleged involvement with the 9 Treyway Gangster Blood Gang. His trial is set for September 4th. If convicted on all charges, he faces up to life in prison. Honey... All right, I broke it down to y'all in my last 6 9 video. I told y'all shit was getting real. When that man was kidnapped way back then, it came out that it was his associates, which made sense because they would be the ones to know his every move. Plus that shooting that happened in LA, that was not a happenstance. That was an assassination plot. And he knew that these guys were trying to come after him because they felt like he wasn't really about that life. And when shit was ready to hit the fan, that he was snitch. So now does it make sense to you why there were all these attempts on his life? the kidnapping the shooting and everything else because 6 9 were paying these people to do his dirt but then when shit started sliding downhill now 6 9 wants to talk to the police and he did a lot of stuff on camera too like the whole tato situation a lot of these guys want to perpetuate this whole gangster persona this whole gangster lifestyle but again you're leaving evidence on social media they're literally able to get so much evidence off of this man's social media page it's ridiculous Of that what they're also doing is that they're gonna go through his social media and as we all know Takashi 69 used to post a lot of fuck shit on his social media him with guns him threatening people him. he's done a lot of shit himself to also get himself in a lot of hot water so this is why I tell y'all y'all have to be very very mindful what you post on social media you cannot say that that's your social media persona and then you're this person they're not trying to hear that when it comes to a criminal case what you put out there for public consumption can come back to bite you in the ass and the saddest part in all of this is that you have a lot of little young boys like I've been saying people were saying oh you're being mean you're being racist like I stated way back months ago why is it that whenever 6 9 needs help he runs to the black community I believe that they all know that Takashi 6 9 is involved in a lot of mess, but they were willing to take that damn chance. And this is some of the things that can happen when you're willing to take these silly chances. When you're a big caliber artist, certain artists you don't need to mix your brand with because then they can take you down in their fuck shit. This man sits online all day antagonizing other gangbangers, thinking that shit's sweet. And then when things get real and shit hits the fan and there's a shooting, then all of a sudden you want to see him walking around LA with all these big burly black security guards. And like I said on Instagram, what I I find really interesting is that he done hired all these big black men to protect him, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah
he done had all these big black men to protect him. Well, you know, being that he's a Mexican, why are you not hiring your cholos, your essays, and your damn vatos? Why are you not giving them jobs? It's funny that he's willing to risk these black men's lives and risk them getting shot on his behest because of all his fuck shit, but he's not willing to risk his own people's lives. Y'all notice that shit? He has all these big burly black security guards protecting him while he's going through LA. All these people looking out for him, all these gangster blood folks, you know what I'm saying, who are ready to ride or die for 6 9 they were all young black men. Why did he not put his own community in that same situation? Why didn't he use the essays to go do his dirt? Why didn't he use, you know what I'm saying, the vatos to go, you know, put in work for him? Why was he so quick as a Mexican kid to use these black guys? And now you see what happens? These black guys put their neck on the line for 6 9 They were doing all types of dirt for him, trying to have his back, doing shootings on his behalf. <laughs> only for him to basically snitch on them and probably cut some type of deal. So this entire situation's a hot damn mess. Meek Mill is also speaking about the situation. I'm gonna go ahead and read to you guys what Meek Mill posted on Twitter. Go ahead and check this out. So Meek Mill says, that's a shame. When I came home, everybody was like, he got some real dudes backing him. I was like, how? Y'all better stop running behind these rappers acting like y'all's ready to throw y'all's lives away over some stupid shit. I seen this coming a while ago. All right, so you guys just saw what Meat Mill had to say, and that's the truth. You have a lot of young dudes in the hood who are hungry. They want to be associated with somebody who has money, who has fame, and everything else, and they're willing to put in work. But like I said, why didn't he put his own family at risk? You mean to tell me before he became a rapper, he didn't have a set of homeboys in his own community that he was riding with tough? Why didn't he put them at risk? Why weren't they out there busting guns on his behalf? No, he used people in the black community. He used people in these gangs to do his work only for him to turn around and snitch on these same guys who were putting in work for him to kill other black men. That's the sad part. They were willing to take Chief Keith's life and Tato's life. You know what I'm saying? They as black men were willing to kill other black men on the behalf of a Mexican kid who's a fake gangster. You know, it doesn't get any more low than that. So this entire situation is a hot damn mess. I don't feel bad for him at all. At this point in time, he was blessed. He got to be world renowned. He got to be known. He was able to, you know, make money, take care of his family. And instead of him sitting down, eating his food and trying to get it the legal way, he kept wanting to push this gangster, gangster blood persona. And now it's come back to bite him in the ass. Okay. All that shit he talked, all the help that people try to give him, all the good advice that people try to show him, he didn't want to listen. And now reality's hitting him and he may be facing life in prison for all the fuck shit he's done in less than two years. This man hasn't been famous for the past 10 years. Years. All of this has been in the span of less than two years. All of this drama, this shooting, his kidnapping, so much nonsense that he's been involved in. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. You know, again, you had Shadi, you know, telling him in the middle of the court trial, we don't bend, we don't fold, this is Treyway. I guess all that information went in one ear, not the other, because 6 9 definitely bended, he folded, and he definitely damn snitched on Treyway, okay? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning Takashi 6 9 basically snitching on his co-defendants, putting everything out there, and basically letting the police know that they were the ones responsible for the hit on 6 9 and on Tato. And, you know, the fact that they actually went through with the shooting, and yes, they missed Sosa, Granted, Chief Keith didn't get shot, but what if an innocent person who just happened to be going to lunch, walking to work, you know, New York is a busy place. There's somebody who's just at the W Hotel, you know, on vacation. Imagine if they would have got hit and killed by a stray bullet. Anybody could have been hurt in all this foolishness and for what? Over social media clout and over Instagram back and forth videos? This entire situation is just sickening. Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this entire situation, including what Meat Mill had to say to 6 9 All right, deuces. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T, and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.